Hey guys, Starlet44 here. I need no introduction, but I got one anyway. And in case you're wondering, no, I'm not dead. I'm still working on some more projects, like a new TTT special. But I'm not going to give away what the plot is because, you know, spoilers. So in the meantime, I thought I'd give you this commentary on one of my favourite TTT episodes, which is Quarantine, which was also the TTT Series 2 finale. And this was one of the videos uh, I had a lot of fun working on. And as you guessed from the title, it's based off of a Tugs episode named Quarantine as well. Yeah. Yeah, this was a episode of Tugs that I really wanted to adapt into a Thomas episode. I don't really know why. I guess I enjoyed that episode a lot. So, I decided to do this episode for this episode. <laughs> yeah, this episode for this episode. And... I, I don't really think they actually do this quarantine flags in on the railways. I just made it up because it's like what they do at sea. Yeah, I just made it up. But that's me making things up. But I do it good though, don't I? And there's there was a bit with James with his sort of like miserable face as it was in the TV series. And since the Christmas short pilot, this was the first time we got to see Ari and Bert again. And from this episode, you would have noticed that Bert's voice sounds different. But that's because it wasn't me doing it in that episode. Because I did Bert's episode, I I did Bert's voice as well as Ari's voice in the Christmas pilot. But for this episode, I decided to let Nemesis Hero One Two Three do the voice for the whole series. And. The two haven't really been included in the show for a while. Uh, I am planning to bring them back, I just don't know when. And of course, this was back when Combined Harvester 01 voiced the Fat Controller. And I'm not sure if he's still working on the City Tram series or if he's retired, I, I'm not sure. I know that he's definitely retired from doing his Thomas series, but I'm not sure if he's still working on his Tram Engines Finn or... Whether he's not, I, I, I don't know. But, yeah, this was the last time he, he ever voiced the Fat Controller in my videos, I believe. And another reason I did quarantine for this series was because I wanted to centre an episode around Toby. Because I never really centred an episode around Toby before this one. So I just decided to have this one centred around Toby. And I thought it would make sense because OJ was the oldest of the Tugs in Tugs and Toby's the oldest steam tram as well as one of the oldest engines on the railway, so I thought it would make sense, yeah. And another YouTube user, I can't remember the name of him now, did this episode for his series finale of his Thomas series, which was discontinued. I think you can still find it on Daily Motion, but I can't remember the name of the user, but you can definitely find a series on Daily Motion. Just like search uh, Sodor Railway Tales or something like that, I, I don't know. And this bit of course was based off of Tugs, but instead of having a Fulton Ferry, I just have a lorry and Bill and Ben the Tank Engine Twins. And of course this was back before I got the new new models for Bill and Ben, so I ended up using those fake ones, yeah. And I, I just love it when Toby's like, you fools, you're exceeding the speed limit if there is one. <laughs> you know, I still love that little pause that I do for Toby before he says, if there is one. Yeah, yeah I'm not really sure why I did that, but... Uh, yeah, I thought it would make a bit more sense to have a lorry having an accident with Toby's trucks instead of another engine. I'm not really sure what the thought behind it was, but I just decided to use a lorry anyway. Yeah, so there you go. There you go. And here's where Ari and Bert try to get the Fat Controller to sell Toby to them. But what they're going to do with the money, I have no idea. Though I guess they'd probably let the scrapyard manager have the money or something like that, I don't know. And as I mentioned before, Nemesis Hero 123 voices Bert from now on, and I continue to voice Ari. And the inspiration for Ari's voice was sort of David Jason's Chief Weasel from Wind in the Willows. 
which is ironic because that's also the voice I use for the Chief Robber in Second Co. And I may end up doing a little joke of that where the two sound similar to each other. I may end up doing a joke of that in the future. And this was one time where we get to see Harvey, and we don't really see him that often, but I hope to use him again. Yeah. And this was the last appearance of Tiger Moth in the recent years of TTTE. But I'm definitely going to bring him back. Yeah. Yeah, of course this Tiger Moth was based off of the Tiger Moth from, from Combined Harvester 1 series, and I just loved how he made his Tiger Moth a villain. So I decided to do the same with my series, with my Tiger Moth. And the voice I did for Tiger Moth in this show was sort of similar to Combined Harvester 1's voice for Tiger Moth. Except I ended up making him sound like an American. But uh, that wasn't exactly intentional, it just came out as American, but... I don't really care, it sounds really good for him. And, of course, Dalek Sek had to be in the episode, yeah. I'm, I made him the Zoran replacement instead of Devious Diesel, because, as you all know, Devious Diesel was sent away from the island back in Series 1. So, yeah, Sek had to fill in the void, as he did with Ghosts, yeah. And, for those of you who don't know, this bit was actually based off of a Dexter's Laboratory short that they showed in between the cartoons on Cartoon Network where Dee Dee keeps doing that what's that trick on them and <laughs> of course Dexter doesn't fall for it the last time when there's actually some huge spider on his face and I did something similar with this one like have Sek be unaware that there's a silence behind him and I think that was the first time I used one of my silent models in a video yeah <laughs> because the silence were new to Doctor Who back then and I wanted to use the silence yeah, so, that was the opportunity for me to use a silent. And, of course, as you know, I've been using the character building silence in the backgrounds of Second Code videos for a while. Because I think it's fun to sort of use the silence in the background where people don't notice that they're there. I just find it fun to do that, yeah. <laughs> and I still love this where Set tells Levine to push off, like, don't you want me about? Push off. Okay. And of course, that was based off of the line from Tug's quality where Zon tells Zug to push off while he goes off to check the ships. Yeah. yeah. And Rosie has quite a lot of screen time in this episode as well. Yeah. And once again, she was voiced by Emily Francis19, who, as always, does a brilliant job of her. Yeah, and James, of course, being like the top hat of the show. Though he's sort of like a mix between himself, top hat, and quagmire in my world. Yeah, it's a crazy combination. And as I mentioned, Emily fans, it's for nine voices, Rosie. And as I said, I'm not sure if she is going to return or if I'm going to have to replace her if she's unavailable to return. But I don't really want to get a replacement for her until I haven't until I know if she is going to come back or not. So, I just need to wait for some answers, yeah. And with this scene, I never actually intended for the Diesel to move at all. I just decided to have him try to start, but break him down as soon as he turns on his engine, yeah. And in case you were wondering, yes, that is the Diesel from Bald Out. I just filmed it so it would look like a different Diesel with no face. Like, I decided to make him look like a non-face half a Diesel. Yeah. And this bit always cracks me up whenever I <laughs> we watch it, like Sek looking at a signed photograph of Sonia Hedgehog in her bikini from The Big Melt. Yeah, it's just once again showing off how obsessed Sek is with Sonic's extremely attractive sister. And you might not have known this, but I was a little bit of a furry in my youth. I think I was a wardrobe furry, like not really telling everybody about it. And I still kind of do have a bit of a crush on Sonia, and it's not just because of her appearance, but I like her personality. She's a fun character, like she's smart and you know, it puts up with her brothers and all that sort of stuff. I just like, there's just something about Sonia that I like. 
and in this episode Rosie got a big part because she was basically being the sunshine of the episode. Like going off to find the diesel which was the replacement for the tramper and finding out that it may or may not be cleared from quarantine which shouldn't really be done on a railway because they don't really use quarantine flags on a railway I don't think. But that's my understanding of railway logic. And of course Sec tries to get in on that diesel and of course instead of walking he just uses his van with nobody in it apparently. But that was back before I got character building models of a Dalek second Cyberman to take the wheel of the van. So that was back before I was able to do that. Because before this video I didn't really have any small enough Dalek or Cyberman models to put in the van. So I just sort of had to improvise a bit with it. So that explains for that explains why in a majority of the past videos you don't see anybody driving the van when it's driving off. Yeah. And of course this was the bit where Toby breaks down and Thomas and Rosie have to take him back to the station to see the fat controller. And a lot of you may be asking how Rosie turned around so fast, but I'd find it best if you didn't question my logic. I don't even want to question it either. <laughs> That's how crazy I could be. And here comes Sex Fan with no driver again. <laughs> yeah. And in this episode, we see a Captain Star side of Sir Topham Hat. Uh, he's quite Captain Starish in this episode. Like the way he talks to the engines and comes up with some solutions and all that. And Combined Harvester 1 did a brilliant job at voicing the character. I, I just loved his voice. And I've been an admirer of his work ever since I watched his first episode of the show. Well, his show, I mean, not the official Thomas show, yeah. Yeah, I... And in a bit we get to see Ari and Bert again, and here they come. Once again trying to get the Fat Controller to sell Toby for a ridiculous amount of money, like 150 or something. I, I, I think that was what they said in the original Tugs episode, so I decided to keep it at what Burke and Blair were going to offer Captain Star for, to, for OJ, yeah. And, yeah, they're just so devilish in the way they try to get people to give away their steam engines for scrap. Because they're pretty villainous diesels. And, as I said in the intro, they're evil-minded. But, it's kind of true. Like, referring back to Series 5 when they were first introduced, but unnamed. Like, they were pretty villainous and evil-minded back then, until Series 6, when they started to become, like, troublemakers before then, yeah. And we get another sort of romantic moment between Thomas and Rosie, where Rosie sort of blows a kiss to Thomas before they go off to their jobs. But, yeah, that was about it for this episode. And this is my all-time favourite moment from the original Tugs episode where someone finds out that the, that the Tramper was quarantined the whole time and that it just pulled its flags down without being checked for, for diseases. And of course the same thing had to happen here, but instead of Set getting infected, his van became infected. And he had to either stay with his van for 40 days or just walk home. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I still love that line, you're a real villain dirt bucket, know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. from the original Tugs episode, that was always one of my favourite Zolan lines, like where he's just looking at you know, Nantucket really madly and goes like, you're a real villain dirt bucket, know that. Yeah, I, I personally think that was one of Zolan's best lines. And, and if you want Tugs to be seen outside the internet, then I'd definitely recommend sign in a petition for Tugs to be released on DVD and free downloadables. Yeah, if you don't... Uh, if you haven't signed up for that petition yet, then the link for it will be in the comments below. Uh, the link will be in the description below if you want to sign it and see Tugs be put on DVD for the first time. And that's all I can say for the episode, and I'm off to continue work on my project, so I'll see you later. Ta! -ra.